Today we're settling a glue grudge once and for all that's been brewing in my workshop longer than my Red Bull addiction. In this corner, Loctite, our best tested super glue and the reigning champion in the super glue Olympics. Fast, sharp, and sticks to everything, especially your fingers. And in this corner, we got JB Weld Epoxy for Plastics. Thick, strong, and cures like it has trust issues and refuses to let go of anything. Ever. <laughs> And today, after getting multiple requests on which one performs better for 3D prints, we're putting them to a brutal head-to-head -head test using Conjure PLA Plus filament in order to create our testing models that we're going to see how well these glues bond to or don't bond to. And a huge shout out to Cheat2 Systems for sending over this Conjure filament so I can continue to break stuff professionally. Today, it's all about super glue versus epoxy. Let's stick some stuff together and see which one survives these brutal tests. All of our 3D printed parts are printed in Conjure PLA Plus, 100% identical. Same filament, same slicer settings, same printer, same questionable life decisions. We're doing the same five tests we had in the Super Glue Olympics. The snap test, the twist test, the drop test, the heat test, and the water test. But we've added two new additional tests to put these epoxies versus uh, Super Glue up against each other to see who is the ultimate champion. I promise you I won't bore you with gluing all these parts together. So let me go get all these bike handles and these new tests glued together that we're gonna use on our uh, force measure rig right here. And we'll get things going. We're gonna get everything labeled and bonded together. Now one of the things about JB Weld, it is a two-part epoxy and you do need to mix it together. We have all our 3D printed test subjects bonded together. We're just going to give them about 15 minutes because that's what J Weld recommends to set the epoxy. And then we're going to proceed with our test. Always remember to wear safety goggles when you're breaking stuff. You don't want to get a piece of this in your eye or even worse. Well, I don't know what could be worse than that, but who knows? Okay, let's get going. Our first test is the snap test. Now, oh, before we start, one of the comments in a recent video was how do I even know which glue is on which thing? So everything is labeled, as you can see here. This says JB Weld, and this is for a twist test. So JB Weld is on there and twist test. So that's how I know which piece is for which test so everything uh -oh, everything is labeled especially when things like that happen and things fall gotta know what's what first up is the snap test we're going to start with loctite in every scenario since loctite sort of our reigning champion from the glue olympics and nothing says good morning like breaking plastic so let's get started with loctite and we're going to find our one that actually says Snap test. Snap Loctite. Oh, it broke. It broke. But look, I wonder if there was just not enough there. So it did. It held, but it didn't hold all of it. It a little bit there on the edge uh, came away. Okay, that's Loctite. JB Weld snap test. Here we go. JB Weld. Now, also another question was, do I go by the manufacturer's um, instructions? So obviously super glue bonds pretty quickly, but if you see here, JB Weld has a 15 minute curing time. Usually what I do though, is I do let it sit a little bit longer than the actual manufacturer's recommendation. Like I said, in this case, it's 15 minutes. Uh, super glue is usually a matter of a minute or so. But these have been sitting for probably a good maybe two hours. So here is JB Weld with the snap test. Okay, JB Weld held up. Loctite, let me just show you the difference. 
Loctite held up too. Let me show you this piece. But, and this could be my fault, so I'm not going to penalize Loctite for that because we know Loctite performs really well. A little bit over there uh, stayed on. Now, that could be I didn't have enough super glue. Maybe I didn't spread it out well enough. Next is the twist test. And what the twist test is designed to do is test the torque on the part in between the bond. This is supposed to simulate real world handling of, for instance, like cosplay items. So this is Loctite in the twist test. Pass. JB Weld twist test. JB Weld twist test. Pass. Now, if I look here, there is a little bit of a difference. JB Weld, because it's an epoxy, I just want to show you guys. We see this is the Loctite and this is the JB Weld. So we see here the Loctite's actually pretty clean. Where the JB Weld expanded out a little bit because it is an epoxy. Now, maybe I put a little too much on there. But what happens is sometimes with the epoxy, it expands out beyond the joint. But that just takes a little bit of prepping time, uh, such as sanding it down. So both of them pass the twist test. Next is the drop test. First, we have Loctite. It's really, I sort of slam them because I'm not getting up on the ladder. But drop test. Okay, Loctite passed. Drop test for JB Weld. And it also passed. As you can see, both of them held up the drop test. Once again, we do have the epoxy that does come out a little bit more than the super glue. So next up is our heat test. We're gonna use our heat gun to heat up the area where we've bonded the two th pieces of the 3D print together, uh, where the glue is, and see if it will come apart. First up, Loctite. Okay. Okay. Loctite passed. The PLA broke before the Loctite. JB Weld. And as you can see here, it's JB Weld. I've never done a heat test on an epoxy, so this should be interesting. Okay. Same thing. JB Weld passed. The bond held together and just the PLA broke. We have our two uh, 3D prints that were sitting in water for 24 hours. The theory here when we did a super glue Olympics was super glue breaks down in water over time. I'm not sure how the epoxy is gonna hold up. We know this held up last time, but let's see if Loctite holds up this time. And it did. Let's see how it holds up after 24 hours in the water. JB Weld water test. And held up beautifully. Okay. So we have two new tests. Both of them involve our force meter. The first one, we've actually bonded together these two designs. And we're going to see how much force it takes to pull them apart or if the PLA breaks first. Now this is our Loctite. And right now we see it's zeroed out. We're gonna turn the force meter and see if we can get it to break. Oh, Loctite held, the PLA broke. Now, if the PLA breaks, it is gonna be at this joint right here because this is the thinnest part of the PLA plus. So, but Loctite held. Now let's test JB Weld. Let's lock it in. Zero out our Newtons. Let's see how much force. Once again, the PLA plus broke. It broke at the smallest part over here. I think I am gonna have to figure out a better way to test this next time. But for this test, JB Weld also held. The last test is the magnet test. We glued in 12 by three millimeter N52 neodymium magnets. We're going to see if the adhesives can hold them in place. And if you made it this far into the video, you might as well hit the follow button. And we've zeroed it out. I have a feeling nothing major is gonna happen, but we'll find out how much force it actually takes to pull apart these magnets, minimum. Yeah, and we saw it. They actually pulled apart right there. 
So let's watch this one more time. Let's watch the highest number in newtons because that's how much force it's taking to pull apart the magnets. So we see, it looks like it's about two newtons. Well, oh, looks like it's about two newtons, hold on. Just curious. Yeah, it looks like it's about two newtons. Not a very eventful test, but I guess you could say Loctite passed. Now, let's test JB Weld. Let's see what are our highest numbers to pull it apart. And we see it was also about two newtons. All right, so that last magnet test was not really a good test. It didn't really tell us anything about whether the bonds would hold in the magnets. Uh, and even I would say the test before in the force gauge, really my design was a little too weak at that um, smallest point. So I don't know if it was really a fair test for the glues. But still, that being said, both JB Weld and Loctite held up perfectly across all the tests. The biggest difference was Loctite was fast and clean when bonding the materials, where JB Weld took a little bit longer to bond. It had a 15 minute bonding time, and it was a little bit more work as you had to mix the two part epoxy together in order to put it on your 3D printed parts. So it was a little bit slower, and I mean, you could argue messier, and like I said, it did sometimes uh, come out of the joint. So there would be a little bit of extra cleanup that you may not have while using the super glue. So one of the other things you may want to look at is the cost per ounce for Loctite and JB Weld because that may also help you make your decision. And I will link both of them in the description below because both of them actually perform perfectly. One is faster and snappier, where the other one's just stronger and more stubborn. What we've learned today is Loctite has always been a rock star in our glue testing. It sets quick, it has good tolerance, and it's sort of like I need this glued right now because impatience is a personality trait. JB Weld, that stuff is like liquid determination. Once it cures, it's not just bonding, it's making a lifelong commitment. Huge thanks to Cheat2 System for providing the PLA Plus that survived this test today. Well, some survived. The rest is now an educational scatter pattern on my workbench. For more on 3D printing DIY and maker projects, make sure you like and follow Maker Build It, and remember, keep on making. Oh, remember, the best builds aren't perfect, they survived your mistakes.